What's well, cracking, big dogs? Welcome back. I guess welcome back to me as well to the main channel. Uh, good to be back. It's been a while since I've been here. Those of you guys that saw me, I guess, way, way, way back, way earlier on, uh, back when I was a scrub. I'm still a scrub, but back when I was a true scrub, just just getting into the content game. Some of you guys remember me. Some of you guys probably followed me over from the other uh, BDG channel called Bump Egg Breakdowns. But from here on out. This is where we're going to be. We're going to be in the main channel, dropping content, Dynasty content specifically. And for myself, uh, I focus mostly on uh, strategy. So Dynasty strategy content, that's that's my bread and butter. I'm not really like a huge player analysis guy or a film grinder or anything like that. Like I, I like to rely on the numbers and I like to rely on other people for film. But for the most part, I like to try and, you know, put out a lot of strategy, like thinking thought piece type content. But yeah, I like to think about myself as like a strategy guide. So I like to think, of, I like to... You know try and show people like how i think when it comes to dynasty versus tell people what to do so that's just me uh there's gonna be a ton of other stuff on here like nick uh noah both the noahs on here are probably gonna tell you guys a little bit about like what to do which players suck which players don't suck i'll do a little bit of that too but for the most part i'm gonna be strategy i'm gonna be your dynasty strategy chirpa that that's how that's how i think about it and that's how you guys think about it too uh but before we get into this week's episode man y'all know what time it is if you don't this is the first time again it's time for that intro, baby. All right, this week's gonna be a short one. I, I didn't want to make a long, I didn't want to make a massive long spiel episode on my first time back to the channel. Want to keep it nice, short, and concise to exactly what's happening today in the now. All right, so it's gonna be short. Some of my, my episodes don't really have like a fixed time i try to aim for something in that like you know 15 to 45 minute range but sometimes it could be an hour sometimes it could be 30 minutes sometimes it could be 20 minutes it just depends on what topic of discussion i want to cover that day how in depth i want to do it and how long it takes me to cover it so that's just really how it is for the channel so you can you can expect long form short form medium form everything every form that you can think of from me on this channel going forward all right the today though the topic i want to discover discuss is the senior bowl because that is the main topic of discussion on twitter that is the main topic of discussion currently in the nfl on mainstream media everywhere you look anything football related is probably going to be somewhat associated with the senior bowl right now and because of that, you probably think the Senior Bowl is very, very important. It's something you got to really, really pay attention to. And don't get me wrong, the Senior Bowl is fun. I think it, it provides a lot of great content, provides a lot of much-needed news that we normally don't have at this time. So all of that's good. But when it comes to fantasy, there really isn't that much that you can take from the Super Bowl, Senior Bowl, right? Because these are the old players, the oldest players uh, that are available on the field. And for the most part, we've already learned what they, what we can from them, at least for a fantasy perspective. I'm sure there's, there's lots of rock stars that emerge on the defensive side of the ball maybe every year or offensive line or stuff like that. But for me, what I'm focused on mainly is wide receiver, quarterback, running back, tight end. And for the most part, if you look historically, like what you get from the senior bowl is a lot of people that are just overhyped, right? That you're not going to get very many great producers or, or gems in the rough gems and like really, really, you know, really, really great players. I mean, there's obviously exceptions to the rule, right? You have guys like Terry McLaurin that kind of emerge out of nowhere and blow things out of the water. But there, for every Terry McLaurin, there are 10, 20, 30, 100, you know, whatever, like Van Jefferson types, you know, like uh, it's guys like him where, where they just aren't that exciting. And usually what happens is they get propped up. So I want to look at why. Like, how do I think about the Senior Bowl? How I believe you should think about the Senior Bowl? And ultimately, why I don't think the Senior Bowl really matters that much. Uh, it, it matters a lot for, for these guys because it helps get the, help them get coverage, helps them get media coverage, and maybe they get hyped up and get drafted whatever super happy for them that's great for them but from a fantasy perspective I, I tend to spend not as much time on the senior bowl or not 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 as much time i tend to place very very little emphasis on what happens at the senior bowl right because if you look at the senior bowl what it is is a bunch of the older players in the league that were not really good enough to declare for the nfl as a junior early declare uh, that stayed behind next year that beat on younger players that are now competing against other players who also weren't really good enough to really declare, right? Because from my perspective, especially at the wide receiver position, you basically have the full profile, or not the full profile, you basically have 80 to 90% of the profile for that wide receiver by the time they're done their second or third year of college, right? What they do in the fourth year, typically, typically, 
Again, there are exceptions to the rule. There are Devonta Smiths out there. There are Terry McLaurin's out there. But typically speaking, way, way, way more often than not, the probabilities are stacked against those that only wait till the last year to produce uh, at a high level. So for me, it's like, you know, it's it's fun to watch. It's fun to see. But I'm not really that excited about any uh, a lot of the players that are in it, uh, especially at the wide receiver position. Like, you, you'll get what you get is – because of the scarcity of data, right? Sorry, the scarcity of news and information because there's nothing else going on right now, right? This is the only thing that we have as football DGENs, fantasy football DGENs to focus on. So therefore, it's all the news that flows through Twitter. It's all the news that flows through timeline. Everyone's talking about it. So obviously, there's going to be more emphasis and more importance placed on these data points and placed on this information and news than realistically it should be. Like imagine if the senior, if, imagine if the senior bowl took place at the same time as the NFL combine, like, or, or like at the same very close vicinity to the NFL draft, like nobody would care about the senior bowl that much because all the good players are declaring early, like all the good wide receivers, all the good running backs, uh, a lot of the good quarterbacks as well. Although there aren't that many of those this year are usually have declared already and, and they're declaring as juniors. And so if you take, if you think about it this way, if you take this pool of senior bowl players and you plop them in the general, uh, the wide pool, wider pool of all the talent that's incoming to the NFL, most of the senior bowl players would rank very, very low compared to the rest of the players, right? And, and that's why I think be, even though there is so much information overflow, it's really important to take a step back and say, okay, let, let me not get like drained and, and, and pulled into all the hysteria and all the hype that's going around some of these players. And, you know, you're seeing it again already with uh, with a lot of these players, you know, fringe guys, fringe running backs, fringe wide receivers that most likely, most likely, like might not even make an NFL roster long term, never mind be fantasy relevant, but we're spending so much time in them. And for me, you know, what I'm trying to spend a lot of my time on right now is just do a lot more analysis on the rookie class, right? Like the, the guys that we know are going to get drafted, the early declares, the Traylon Burks, the Garrett Wilsons, um, the Breeze Halls, the Drake Londons, like, you know, Jamison Williams, all these guys, I'm trying to figure out which one of these guys I can place at the top of my list and not get burned, at least have a high probability of not getting burned. And that's like, that's what I like to focus on. Like to me, all the senior bowl guys, like at least at the skill position are mostly guys that you're not, you should not be considering. Some people will consider them, but you should not be considering them until at least like the third, fourth round darts. Right. And I, I get it. It's really, really fun to hit on those gems. It's really, really fun to to kind of hit on that lotto pick but for the most part like that's not a very very good use of your time i don't know about you guys my time is finite my time is limited uh you know i'm doing a bunch of other shit so it's like i can't really it doesn't make sense for me to focus so much on on an event which really in the grand scheme of things has a very 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 little impact on uh on the outcome of that player long term right and but it is important to pay attention to it somewhat i would say it, like it, it's good to kind of know which which of the draft media heads are talking about it because it provides you a nice little liquidity window and this is how i think about it where you can see the guys that are getting hyped up and you can flip them in the short run so guys like van jefferson maybe maybe you have an early draft you grab him in the fourth round you flip them later on for the third round or you flip them for a late second I, I definitely saw some people doing doing some of that stuff so there are some benefits to to use it more as like a measuring stick of what the hype is for that player and kind of kind of play on those interim short-term flips but that's not really my strength anyway so that's why i don't really like to focus on it that much right but if you think about what the what the senior bowl means what it means in terms of the hype for draft capital there is some stuff uh there is some stuff to move on there but just just not significant enough to warrant the amount of hype and warrant the amount of attention that it is currently getting right but i do want to talk about something i do find interesting about this senior bowl is like we have a very very weak quarterback class right at least that's what everyone says that's what everyone tells you and based on the mainstream media draft capital pr predictions it seems like that's the case there aren't really any like top five top three locks like there were last year like we knew trevor lawrence was going 1.01 we knew uh you know zach wilson was going pretty damn high we knew trey lance going pretty damn high we thought justin fields gonna go pretty damn high like there were a lot of guys last season were like okay, these are all gonna be like top 10 picks right we don't really have that this year. People are all over the place. And this is the other thing with Senior Bowl, right? As you're getting your inflow of Senior Bowl, just keep in mind, it's it's a lot of other like average guys like you and me or girls that, that just go there and tweet their opinions on players and just see stuff and say, oh, they watch a player and they say, wow, this guy's on fire. But 
they're not watching the entire field, right? They're not watching the entire population of players. And again, these players are not competing against the highest level of competition. So, so you're getting, you're getting scarcity of information that's giving, that's provided by people with most likely a lot of tunnel vision, right? And then they're making implications of that player based on what they see. So that's the other risk with trying to take in a lot of this information. But what's interesting about this year is there aren't that many strong quarterback uh, prospects, but a lot of the quarterbacks are playing. Like they're at they're at the Senior Bowl. They're they're you know they're they're out there. They're getting scouted by draft. So Malik Willis, obviously, very very hot topic of discussion because of his rushing ability, because of his economy ability, but very very raw. Uh, skills and very, very raw skill set. Not a very developed player. Um, shout out to Jared Wackerly over at Dynasty Nerds. I've been following around, following his tweets, and he's been talking about you know day one. I think Malik Willis was like all over the place, uh, but he kind of improved throughout his time there. He's got better and better and better. So that's good to see. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, it's still a very, very small sample size uh, based through the lens of one player, one one guy who I you know who I trust and who I um, who I respect and and Jared Wackerly. But like. I think at the same time, it's still a very, very limited lens, right? So that's why we got to be careful. But Malik Willis is there, obviously. Uh, Kenny Pickett is also there, a very, very hotly debated guy. Um, and then Sam Howell is there, which actually threw me off initially because Sam Howell is a junior. So I was like, what the hell is this guy doing in the Senior Bowl? But I think just something to do with the timing um, I basically put him into the Senior Bowl. So that's why I was a little bit intrigued because I was very, I thought Sam Howell was going to be the QB1 of this class, right? Because I thought he had a very, very good uh, sophomore season. Uh, he was pretty decent as well as a true freshman. He had a down year, obviously, this year. But from my perspective, like the numbers wise, he seems to be the best bet. But, you know, at the same time, this is where I say, you know, the senior bowl does have some value as like a negative litmus, litmus test, like a negative indicator is there isn't that much hype about Sam Howell. It seems like all the talk is about Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett. Right. And some people, some of the mainstream media guys, I think like uh, I think Todd McShay, maybe does he have I think he might have Malik Willis, Malik Willis, him or one of the big talking heads has Malik Willis as the top quarterback off the board, but still only in like a pick 20. So um, chances are, I think one of these guys probably goes in the top 15 just because there's so many teams that need quarterbacks and they might take a swing. But like I said, there are there's aren't any surefire guys. Uh, so I think you're going to see a lot of these guys that we, some of us have loved for a long time, fall into that mid, you know, mid to, for, mid, mid to late first round, which, which definitely is very different than a quarterback that gets drafted top 10. But if they get drafted a good team, they have a good tool, tool set. They have a good skill set. It's very possible, uh, that they become fancy relevant. So that's why I think from my perspective, the only reason, the main reason why I'm very interested in the senior bowl is because of the quarterbacks. I'm, I'm very, very rarely interested in the senior bowl because of skilled position players, but because of Malik Willis, because of Sam Howell, because of Kenny Pickett, it's worth it to pay attention to see how these guys are developing, see how the mainstream media is forming their narrative to talk about them, um, to see if that provides any indication of where they go for draft capital. Because like I said, the biggest question mark for me this year is draft capital for a lot of these guys. I have no idea where they're going to get drafted. I don't have much confidence in projecting them. That's why I have my wide receivers at the top of the draft. Same thing with, with running backs. I'm not sure where any of these guys are going. So that's why I have the wide receivers there because the wide receivers, like I said, 80 to 90% of their profile is already complete. We already have the data on them. They've already produced. They've already early declared. They already have declared like one, two, three years of, ex they've already declared with three years of experience out of college. A lot of the top guys, right? So they've, already checked a lot of the boxes um so that's why they are the least risky whereas these quarterbacks they have checked not very many boxes right and so the, the, the senior bowl is just like another data point into how the broader media and how the broader market is viewing them so that's what i'm paying attention uh for but like i said one thing i'm noticing not a lot of hype for sam howell that's not good for me in terms of my uh me liking him so like when I think about the senior bowl, the same way I think about the NFL combine, right? Like I will rarely, very, very rarely will I see someone blow up at the senior bowl, blow up at the combine who was not on my radar, who I didn't like. And I'll be like, okay, wow, that this guy totally flipped the script because he ran a four, four, or he ran a four, three or whatever. Right? Like I use the combine and I use the senior bowl as negative filters. What I mean by that is if there's a lot of hype, a lot of positive news around them. For the most part, I don't really care unless you get that like 
you know, that drum beat that's like consistent through all corners, every single facet. All the media is saying Malik Willis is the guy. All the draft guys are saying Malik Willis is the guy. All the guys at the senior ball are saying Malik Willis is making all the plays. Then maybe that's there's enough there to kind of like put some backing behind it. Still not like full shove and go all in or anything like that, but there'll be a little bit more to it. For the most part, if I see someone flop at the senior bowl, right, that I like, chances are there aren't many of those guys because, you know, there aren't many guys that I like that go to the senior bowl because I like the younger early declares. But if I see a guy really like flop at the senior bowl, flop at the combine, I will push them way, way down my list because I'm trying to mitigate as much risk as possible. And both the combine and senior bowls, uh, they're risk indicators to me. They're not, they're not upside indicators, really. They're not. They're not I'm like there aren't players in there that they're going to tell me like, hey, this guy is someone that you must pay attention to. This is someone that you must go after. This is a guy that you totally miss in your process. And now he's only popping up in the senior bowl or combine. There aren't going to be many of those. Right. But there will be guys that who I really liked. Right. Coming into the combine, coming into the draft that, you know, that I keep getting negative indicators on. And a good example of that in prior years was Seth Williams. Right. Seth Williams. I loved him as a prospect. So I thought, you know, this guy, here, here's a guy that's, you know, 220 plus pounds, has the alpha size, has been an early producer, has produced throughout this collegiate career, but zero hype leading up to the draft, no hype going in the combine, like nothing's happening for this guy. So I moved him down. Another guy is Tyler Johnson, right? Someone else who uh, didn't even go to the senior bowl, didn't get invited, I don't think. All the way leading up to the draft, there's no positive news. So again, I'm using those negative indicators to filter out guys who I may have been higher on or guys who I shouldn't have been as high on as I have been. And that's going to happen, right? I'm going to fall in love with guys with the numbers, especially if there's any film to support it. But if if I, you know, if we get to these data points, if we get to these key major milestones and nobody's talking about them, nobody cares about them, right? I'm going to start getting concerned. And I felt that a little bit last year too with, with Brian Edwards. I'm not sorry, not last year, the year before when he got drafted. I felt that a little bit too with Brian Edwards where it was like, look, like all the analyst guys, we love this guy, right? And he's just, he was a senior, obviously. But we didn't really hear like that much hype leading up the draft. So I was like, I'm unsure about this guy in terms of where he's getting drafted. So to me, I try to get like, you know, try and get your spidey, spidey senses tingling a bit, right? Like all the negative stuff. It just counts a double for me uh, versus all the positive stuff because everyone is incentivized to be positive, right? The same thing with training camp. Like when people go to Senior Bowl, like why do they go there? Because they're true fans of the game. They love the game. They're trying to cover it for, you know, themselves. They're trying to cover it for their team. They're trying to cover it for whatever publication or fantasy site they work on, right? They want to be positive, and that's great, right? They want to be positive. They should be positive. This is a positive event. These are young guys trying to live out their dream. But for me, I'm a cynic, right? I'm a cynic in the sense that. I'm not, everyone's trying to be positive. So they're, they're all incentivized to hype people up. So therefore, when someone does say something negative, I'm like, wow, okay, I got to pay attention to this because it's rare and it's not, they're not incentivized to do that because players don't want to hear you say negative stuff about it. You want to see, you want to say positive stuff so you can hopefully get interviews with those players, get to interact with them. And that's all cool and all part of the game. For me, I'm trying to be, you know, analytical about this. I'm trying to really identify what matters and doesn't matter for fantasy. So in my opinion, the senior bowl for the most part holds very little significance when it comes to the fantasy aspect. It holds a lot of significance for the players and for the people that are trying to live out their dream for sure. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to shit on that aspect of it, but for a fantasy, from a fantasy perspective, very rarely are you going to find studs or even good or relevant players at the skilled position coming out of the senior bowl. It's just very, very rare. So it's not really worth your time, but this year, I'm making a special case, make an exception because all the quarterbacks are there. And it's a very, very questionable quarterback class. That doesn't mean just because it's questionable, we don't spend any time analyzing. We fade everybody. That's not how that works. Like I want to try and understand the class and maybe try and take in some data points that provide me a little bit of an edge. And so far, it looks like Malik Willis trending up. Kenny Pickett trending up, depending on who you ask, which is the other problem. Like a lot of inconsistent information there. But not a lot of hype for my guy, Sam Howell. Maybe it's just my timeline not being filtered well enough for him, but I'm just not seeing too much from him um, to get excited about. So uh, I'm not saying this is death sentence or anything like that. I still think his numbers and everything that, that backs Sam Howell is probably, he makes him the best in the class. But if there's not enough hype around him, if no one's talking about him, if he's not going to get drafted very highly, I really need to recalibrate my own thinking and my own views of him. So that's really what it comes down to. So TLDR, Senior Bull, overhyped. Probably doesn't matter as much as people want it to matter, but it's a fun event. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to show on your fun days. So go out and do your thing. 
Uh, but just don't weight it too heavily when it comes to fantasy. Don't let it skew you because of the scarcity of information and news that is available to us right now. All right. That's all I got for you guys this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, for those of you guys that came over from the Bunkyard Breakdown channel, welcome back to the main channel with the Godfather, both the Noahs themselves. Um, and yeah, man, I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to be putting out more content on this channel, reaching a broader audience, hopefully bring a lot of you guys into the dynasty community. I know there's a big, big redraft following for BDG, but I really do believe. And you know, if you ask a lot of the old OG BDG followers, the true fans, man, a lot of them have gotten dynasty over the course of the last year. We've onboarded them and it's been a fucking great time. So hopefully you guys, uh, those of you guys out there that are thinking about joining dynasty, I'm hoping that some of my strategy videos are going to help you, you know, push you over the edge and jump in head first in Dynasty. Because I promise you, I promise you this, you will not regret it. Dynasty is a freaking good, 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 good time. It's a, it's more commitment for sure because you got to commit for a longer period of time. But honestly, if you're coming from redraft, it's a lot less work in season because the waiver wires are way more thin. Um, you know, you get trading and stuff like that, but it, like trading is way more fun than managing waiver wires on a weekly basis. Like I used to hate putting out waiver wire articles, waiver wire suggestions, stuff like that. Cause like, it just feels like more of a grind every single week. There's not much of that in dynasty. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. If you did make sure you hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications You're to get videos notified when we put out videos like this on the channel, it's going to be coming at you three, four five times a week from now until forever, because there is no off season in dynasty. All right. That's all I got for you guys this week. Until next time. Peace.